Hello, hello! Good evening, everyone! Is my mic working? Is everything working? I think it is. Yay! <laughs> How are we tonight? Now, I've just finished my giant painting. Well, 99.9% .9 finished. There's one more detail I have to do tomorrow, so I'm not going to show it tonight, but I promise I will post it on the Discord tomorrow. So go check out the Discord tomorrow. Hi, Yik! How are you? Thank you for joining me. Um, so yeah, so that's very exciting that that painting is mostly done. Unfortunately, I'm in, oh, good, good voice, good music levels. Yeah, you're the best. Thank you. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm sort of in that point where I'm just looking at all the mistakes in the painting or the things that I wish I did differently. So it's in the other room tonight. So I don't look at it and I don't stare at it anymore until tomorrow. Um, I'm sure it's better than I think it is. It's just one of those when you stare at something too much, especially at the end of a painting when you can't really change a lot of the big structural stuff or things like that. Yeah, you sort of get stuck in this point of that's what it is, I guess. And yeah, there's definitely a few things I wish I did differently. But tonight we're going to start a new painting, completely fresh surface and get some fresh feeling. We're doing it a little bit differently tonight. We're going to use a transfer sketch. So that'll be interesting in and of itself. So let me change cameras. One sec. Welcome, welcome. So transfer sketch. Who's used a transfer sketch before? It is basically, I put down a sheet of paper that has white chalk on one side. And then I put down my image on top of what I want to paint. And then I've traced over the contour lines or the main lines of the figure. So then it transfers onto the board. So a little bit differently from when I free sketch, when I just block in a big thing. Thank you, Jess. Thank you. Um, yeah. So this is a much faster way of painting. Hey, Kathy. How are you? Um, using a transfer sketch is definitely a lot faster. I know a lot of painters here on YouTube and off YouTube use transfer sketches just normally because the time and effort it takes to free sketch a likeness is just not in their interest and that's absolutely fine. I have nothing against people who prefer to work that way all the time. I'm definitely, I, sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. In this sort of case where I need a quick turnaround, so this painting I want to sort of get done in four to five sessions max, then yeah, a transfer sketch definitely helps me go a bit faster. So I'm just noticing all the little bits of like dust or one little dog hair that was in the paint from the background. This is the background that we painted on, I think it was the stream before last, we did cloudscape backgrounds. So yeah, it's sort of come along a long way. But I'm not sure if I'm going to stick with what I have on the palette tonight. It's sort of what's left over from my last painting. So we might be adjusting colors as we go. But this figure has a beautiful purple light coming on this side of his face and then a beautiful cyan colored light on this side of the face. So I'm going to start with probably the darks and then work my way towards the lights. But how are you all? How's your day? Yeah, Jess and Kathy, what have you been up to? This is going to look so drastic and dark until we get more colour on, but it's fine. Okay. I have had a bit of a weird day because I popped the puppy in play care so I could go to my old day job and help out for a day. But because I got my vaccine yesterday, yay! Well, first dose. Um, I got really tired halfway through the day, so then I came home and painted, had a bit of a nap. So it's been a bit all over the place. You've been painting? <laughs> good day, good day. Oh, it is cold now, Jess. Yes, you stay nice and cozy. Get the heat pad out. Many layers. Just sort of plotting a few spots where it's dark changing my mind very quickly on what I want. <laughs> I 
my main goal today is to fill it all in as long as we fill it in the lighting's a bit bright let me see what i can do about that is that better maybe i can change it in my camera settings oh no not that oh ignore that i clicked the wrong button uh, what can I do? That's better? Okay. Let's try that for a bit. Cool. Because this is a very light painting, it's quite different from what I normally work on. I normally work with a lot more contrast, so a lot more dark backgrounds and direct lighting, so it will be interesting. I may end up darkening the background a little bit just because it is so light, but we'll see. I've already done a bit of a first pass on the second painting which goes with this one, which was more of a sunset as opposed to this is more of a sunrise, and that one I've already darkened the background a bit just because it suited the figure more. I think I know the color I want. One second. This one's called Radiant Green by Gamblin. The Radiant colors by Gamblin are like high chroma light colors, basically. Um, so I might end up adding the purple as well because they're going to help me when we get to the purple side of the face. I might as well crack it now. I'm thinking about it. Oh, do I have the Radiant Purple? I thought I did. Okay, I don't think I have the purple. That's alright. I have Lilac by Art Spectrum. We can give that a go. Radiant. I don't know the Divergent series, so sure, let's call that headcanon. Hi Kel, how are you? I got a stalker photo of you today. My sister-in-law saw you walking down the road. I think with Tim. And sent me a photo, so... Yeah. I'll send it to you later if you like. <laughs> yeah, see this violet is like hella light colored. Yeah, no, I think she was like getting in her car and then saw you out, out somewhere where there was a parking lot. Um, so she took a snap and just sent it to me and I'm like, that's adorable. No, Pup wasn't with you, or at least not in the car park. Car park of somewhere. I did not ask for details. I am a terrible spy. Hehehehe. <laughs> Morning coffee walk. Adorable. I was just saying I put Dipper in play care today, so I didn't get my normal walk walk. But I did go to the art shop for a few hours, so I ran around the shop like ragged. Yee. Oh, the golf course has a good coffee shop? Hey, wherever you can find what you want. That's fair. <laughs> How was your day besides coffee? Oh, hello Shiny from Northland! Thank you for joining, how are you? We're just starting a new painting tonight, so I'm just getting into 
blocking in some colors. I want to cover the whole figure. This is the goal for tonight. <laughs> oh, a bit of a headache. Oh, have a cup of tea. Nice tea. Jess, you too. Have a nice cup of tea and warm up if you're cold. I get very demanding when I'm on stream, don't I? Telling you what to do. I don't mean it. I'm a very not bossy person, I promise. I'm just suggestive with force. <laughs> okay, maybe not. Oh, I'm making dinner. Yum. We just had dinner. Dr. Batman made me some lovely dinner. So we had like slow cooked yummy meat with onion rings and salad and what else? Sweet potato fries. I love sweet potato fries. They're so good. A wriggly lamb on your knee. <laughs> so cute. Absolutely understand if you need a pop up for any reason. <laughs> I'm supremely suggestive, am I? Is it in an aggressive way or in like a nice friendly way? I'd like to think more of a nice friendly way. So I'm using a filbert brush just because, which is the curvy shaped one. Oh, I can hold it over the painting like that. So it's like kind of curved like a rounded fingernail. Um, so I can just splat in all the colors. In a loving way. Oh, I'm glad. <laughs> That's nice. <laughs> Yeah, so it's already transitioning from the purple forward. My only thing is all this purple is brighter than this skin tone, so I need to brighten all this up. But that's okay. It's a problem with colour relationships. You need colour to be down first before you can make it have a relationship a lot of the time, so... Just gradually add some light. Hanging up the laundry. Oh, you're so productive, Sally. Welcome to the stream. Thank you for being here. You're being very good hanging up your laundry. I think today is the first day in three days I haven't forgotten laundry in the washing machine. Because I have a very dark wardrobe, I sometimes forget to do a whites load. And my husband ran out of singlets this week, so I had to do an extra load of washing. And then I left in the washing machine all day, because I'm a forgetful girl. But it was fine. They were fine. And the day before that, I'd done the same things with the towels. So, you know, eh, it's fine. You just rinse them again. <laughs> Ooh, hot chocolate. Good idea, Jess. Good idea. Oh, what flavour hot chocolate? Dun, 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 dun. Forgetting the laundry is just that annoying thing of sitting there going, Ugh, now I have to deal with it. When past Liz was meant to deal with it, and sometimes I get annoyed at past Liz because she doesn't do what she's meant to do. That's the bit that gets me. Yeah, run the wash again or just rinse it. Yeah. You got a free dryer! Oh! Ah! Well, that's alright, fixing something for $15. Nice work! I love free stuff like that, because it doesn't matter if it lasts you a year or 10 years, because you're like, oh, I paid $15 for it. <laughs> nice! It is winning. Well done. Although I'm not a big fan of people leaving stuff behind at houses, because I'm always like, I don't want to deal with your junk. Like, 
one whole section of my laundry cupboard here is stuff that the landlord's left behind. And I know they left it behind to be nice, things like bath mats and that, but I'm not going to use their stuff because that's just weird. I did use the tissues. They left like seven boxes of tissues around the house and I'm like, yeah, we're using these. <laughs> what a weird thing to leave though, unless they just really need tissues to be available. I don't know. Tissues. Yeah, I've never had a clothes dryer. I'm sure it would be very good in winter, especially if it's like towels and things and you just want them to be warm, lovely. Although this house does have good heating, which I'm glad for. So I just set up all my laundry under the heat vent and it dries overnight, which is great. Well, not overnight, like during the day. Yeah. Yeah. Leaving weird landlord things in one storage area, but then it takes up all your storage areas, which is the pain. I don't want my storage areas to be full of random stuff, because I have too much stuff, and that's why I need the storage areas. You guys seen my studio tour video? I stuffed a lot of things in this room. Although I need to post like an update because I changed my cupboard and my cupboard is like my proudest achievement at the moment because I got a new Ikea thing, which is like the QB bookshelf thing. What's it called? Is it a Calax? Maybe. Either way, I got one of them and it's like the perfect size that fits underneath the bar of the wardrobe. So that's made the left hand side super compact as opposed to the weird old bookshelf thing I had before, which you can see in the Studio Tour 2021 video um, on my YouTube channel. And then, yeah, on the right hand side, I've been able to store nearly all of my artwork that's not on the walls, which is awesome because it's mainly bigger pieces. <laughs> Most of the pieces I still have are bigger pieces and they're the ones that are the hardest to store. Um, because a lot of my little pieces are either with galleries or sold. Because I have amazing collectors and you guys are amazing. But yes, not many people have room for giant big pieces, so... I end up having those ones. Which I'm not mad about, but I do need more wall space in order to hang them all. Alright. It is a Calax. Okay. Okay, I was right. Cool. Yeah, they threw in the dryer for free because they thought it was junk. That's not so gracious. <laughs> I am glad you ended up getting it working so easily though. That's that's a win for you guys. Removing a dryer when it's junk is more annoying and they didn't want to have to do that. That's true, banisters do help the hanging stuff in a second story house. <laughs> God, I haven't lived in a two story house in ages. The last one was the Frankston house. That was a billion years ago. I like two story houses. We just keep ending up in rentals that are once true. Which I suppose is a good thing, but I don't know. I just like height. I like how much light you get on a second story of a house. You get so much natural light. It's lovely. I mean, yes, it does get hot in summer a lot of the time, but it's still lovely. Lovely. All right, we have some weird blobs. Achievement. Hmm. Mixing up some darker tones and we'll just gradually wiggle into this area. This is the harder thing with the transfer drawing when you're doing stuff like the face you can get overwhelmed with how many details you've got to fit in a small area, as opposed to when you don't use a transfer drawing, you start simple with big chunks and then refine down to the details. So it's a little bit tricky. They do, but stairs give you free exercise that you don't have to think about. 
I only find them annoying when you've got to carry like a giant artwork upstairs. That's a very specific annoying. <laughs> but seriously, living in a house with stairs, like that was great for my fitness and everything. And I didn't need to think about it. As opposed to at the moment, I really should go back to the gym. But, oh, I forgot to mention, Caffeine tonight has been sponsored by Senson, who's amazing. So I want to say a big thank you to Senny. I know she's not here at the moment, but if she pops in later, I'll say it again. Thank you for sponsoring the Caffeine for the evening. If you would like to sponsor Caffeine at any time, you are welcome to go to my Kofi account, where you can buy me a Kofi. And it's not an actual coffee, because I don't drink coffee. But Caffeine, because that makes the artist go-go. Okay, Yik, that is a very specific thing, and I will always be proud about the fact that Jack and I got your giant mattress upstairs. I do apologize for the dent in the wall, though, that we put in the wall. It's like a little dent, but it annoys me every time I go over to your house and see it. <laughs> I will have to come over and sand your wall and repaint it at some point. <laughs> oh, that's true. How's Atlas going with the, with the stairs? That's probably good for his fitness, too. Forcing him to go up and down stairs all the time. I feel like I'm giving him weird makeup. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> it is a graph, but it's a graph that's a dent. My yik, my Kofi at the moment, it's partially caffeine, but actually, yeah, Senny's donated so much, I'm, I'm good for caffeine for ages. So I mentioned on my Kofi account that after a lot of thinking and a lot of research, I'm going to invest in a DSLR camera that I can use for both filming my YouTube videos and for streaming. And it means that this camera that's looking at the artwork will be perfect. You'll be able to see the artwork, how it actually looks. None of the sort of light fuzzing that you got up here where the light's overexposed or anything like that. So um, there's a great camera I'm looking at that's a Canon that works for both and I'm doing the long-term save up for that. So any money that goes towards the Kofi account and all my art sales at the moment will be going towards a digital SLR camera. So yeah, I've got the long-term goal of hopefully Christmas um, and we've got oil tober between now and then. So let's, let's see if we can raise money to get a really nice camera and then you guys can see what I'm doing just that bit clearer and the bit prettier. Um, which would be awesome. So thank you Yik, for bringing that up. So that's a new thing, but it's exciting. Um, yeah. Atlas goes up the thinner parts of the stairs. That's weird. Why would you do that? The thicker parts of the stairs are easier unless he's trying to shortcut. He's trying to shortcut up the, you know, I don't have to walk as far part of the stairs. That is weird though. Do your stairs have gaps? Cause that would freak me out if he was going up and down gappy stairs. I am not good at gappy stairs, but that's because I have a fear of falling. Hi Sarah! How are you darling? And yes, I can't wait for oil tober either. I'm so excited. Um, I actually emailed Dodgy Paper, Dodgy Roger here in Melbourne about paper this week. So we're not going to do gold and silver the way we did last year. We're going to do something different. But I've got some intriguing things I've messaged him to ask if they're possible so we will see <laughs> that's very exciting eee. yeah animals including Liz hates open riser stairs I just visualize my foot sliding through like the whole time I walk up and down open riser stairs it just makes my my foot go bleh. But do you mean from an accessibility point, service animals hate them? Because I, I would understand that. Maybe they're visualizing their people sliding their feet through every step because... Oh, he doesn't have gaps. That's good. Oh, he's racing you. That's adorable. Yes, well, a lot of the time they're slippery stairs as well because they're like wood or metal. And you're like, this is a terrible idea open riser stairs that are slippery. I know carpeted stairs are annoying, Sally can attest, but um, at the same time I feel very safe on them because I feel like if I fall down it's not going to hurt. <laughs> so that's always a nice thing. Even though yeah, carpeted stairs to clean them is a butt, you can't exactly ask a Roomba to clean carpeted stairs. Bum, 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 bum. 
Sorry, I know I'm jumping all over this painting. I'm just sort of playing with the colours until I can find colours I like. I'm not convinced on the like forehead colours and stuff like that. Quite yet. Got a new yellow on my palette, which is permanent. Lemon by William Spag. And I'm still sort of figuring him out. He's not as cool as I thought he would be for a lemon. He's more robust, which is interesting. Not what I expected. Open risers can be tripping hazards, and particularly if lit from behind. Yes, create a disturbing effect. We can affect epilepsy. Ah, uh, that just puts my anxiety up even more. Just from passing it, you can see that that flicker. Yeah. Ugh. Do not recommend tumbling down carpeted stairs while cleaning them. Yeah, but imagine how much more painful that would have been if they weren't carpeted. Also, you're a silly and don't do that. Because, you know, hurting your back is not a good idea. Not that I'm telling you off, because I'm super nice and supportive on this stream. I don't tell off my friends. <laughs> Unlike that time you slipped down carpeted stairs whilst holding a cat. Yes, also not recommended. Also not recommended, especially because the cat did not enjoy that. <laughs> Threw the cat into your air and landed on your bum. I remember that bruise! Is that weird to say? I remember that bruise. <laughs> <laughs> not laughing. Like the bruise when I fell over, we had a wooden divider at our house to stop the dogs getting through to the bedrooms because they were carpeted rooms um, and it sort of went up to like your knee and I fell over and managed to like have it run all the way down my arm and so I had this step by step bruise all the way down my arm from this edge of this piece of wood. That was one of my most spectacular bruises. It was like a tattoo all the way up my arm. Wow. Oh my god that was a million years ago Sally. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Yik, terrible. You you get a you get a point. <laughs> Would you say it was a catastrophe? I had to say it out loud, it was even worse out loud. Oh god. <laughs> oh god. I love my stream. You guys are great. Thank you all for coming to my stream. I love everyone who comes in. You're all so nice. Let's put some blue on the nose. I did really like this pose because there's this bit of blue that comes across to the nose just to highlight the light. So that's quite lovely. Blue, 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 blue. <laughs> you got to document those bruises. You do. They're, they're like galaxies on your skin. Well worth recording. Hell, painting inspiration. There you go. <laughs> Jess, bring me the hot chocolate instead then. No, don't. That's really mean. Yik's too nice. Don't do that. It was worth it. I'm glad. I'm glad. <laughs> Oh god, we're all dorks. I love it! Sarah, are you still there? How was your day today? What'd you get up to? I like hearing about everyone's days. Yay! Gymnastics! No worries, Cal. You have a lovely dinner. Watch people do the flippy loo flips. And you have fun. I'll see you later. Thank you for tuning in. You went to Costco today. Oh, that's exciting. Did you get Swiss Miss? Because that was on our list. <laughs> oh, the Swiss Miss. You know we're just going to get you more and then you're going to have so much Swiss Miss. Yeah. Although it is the season. I don't know whether they're selling out of it at the moment. 
100% why you went. <laughs> I picked it. I picked it. <laughs> You're still getting more. You're stuck with it now. Swiss Miss forever. I remember I gave the last of our stash to um, my best friend because when... So she was heavily pregnant. And she said when she gives birth, like, that's her go-to drink at night for, like, 2 a.m. feeds and all that. She just gets into the Swiss Miss, and I'm like, that's brilliant. Because I gave her some originally, and then, yeah, she took the rest of my stash. <laughs> you guys all have your Swiss Miss addictions. Oh, Jack enjoyed Costco? That's awesome. Did you get bagels and all the good stuff? What else? What's in the random middle section of Costco at the moment? Is it all winter clothes still, or are they... I like it when they do the book section bigger that one time of year, because then they have all the good books out cheap. It's the marshmallow? Sure. Nothing super exciting? Oh, that boo. Boo! Costco, be more exciting. Kids books, but some nice rugs. Oh, rugs is a bit different. Rugs is definitely a bit different. The kids books are great when you need to buy presents. I love that you can just get like whole omnibuses for like 30 bucks and be all like, there you go! Enjoy everything by Beatrix Potter. Done. Or R.L. Stein. Depending on child. Hmm. Oh, Sally, do they still not bring back the giant bags of Baby Bell? Or did you just let your membership go? You don't really live close to it anymore. starting to look really weird, but I promise it'll come back. <laughs> They're doing their sample in little paper bags now! Oh, that's nice. So nothing sort of open to the air. I'm glad they figured out a way to still do samples, because samples was always fun. Yeah, I haven't been to Costco in ages either. We were gonna go- oh, the girls went with Anna recently, but I wanted to get home to Dipper, so I did not join. But and I have an appointment there in two weeks, so, you know, daddy dead approval still required. For anyone who doesn't live in Victoria, that means I'm waiting for the premiere to say we're allowed to do COVID things like have a hen's party, for which I need to go to Costco. So I realise Daddy Dan doesn't make sense to everyone. <laughs> all the thing, all the fingers crossed, says all everything. I'm not telling you at all the things have just been arriving at my house for that, that I'm very excited about. Because I didn't do a lot of internet shopping. Don't know what you're talking about. I love internet shopping. It's so good. And then things just arrive at your house and you've done the work and you're like, yes, everything's coming together. <laughs> Good reaction there. Also, I saw you were playing more of the room because Steam is like a cheater like that and tells me when my friends are playing games. How are you enjoying it? I got one of my streamer friends into it the other night. He ended up finishing the room one all in one sitting. Which was good because I needed something that kept me interested while I was painting, so... Ooh, you bought all this stuff on eBay on Tuesday and it all arrived today. That was good. Did you only buy from Australian sellers? That's real quick. That is like Christmas. 
I love unwrapping everything. Although Dipper is always very confused. She's always like, why are you unwrapping all the things? What is all this plastic? Blah. She's not a fan. Unless I have something cardboard that I can give her to play with. Then she's fine with it. The room is addictive. It's pretty fun that way. Because it's so satisfying. When you figure out a puzzle, it's just like, oh, yes. She's exactly what we need. So we need some good, satisfying gratification games at the moment. This is going very green down there. And I want more peachy tone. Hold on a sec. Wash off my brush thoroughly. Where's my other rag that I had there? Sometimes you don't notice that your rag is like saturated with one colour and then it'll keep poisoning your brush as you go. So it's good to have a couple of rags handy and sort of switch them out. My delivery driver actually got out of the van this time around because instead of putting it in the box next to my door, which is for deliveries, he's hid it behind the box next to my door that's for deliveries. Very carefully hid it behind the box. So, you know, if you want to get fancy with it, sure. <laughs> Do the colors mix together on the canvas or is it more like one color going over the path? Kind of both. Kind of both in that the colors will sort of merge when they touch, but as well as that, if I go over the top the whole time. Oh, Kathy, was that your cat? That's adorable. <laughs> What's your cat's name? I love it when cats type. That's that's so cute. Oh, completely fine, by the way. Do not stress. But yeah, no, so this sort of thing where I'm putting one color over the other, they sort of mix together depending on how much pressure I use. So. If I want the colors to mix together a lot, I'll use more pressure and go over the top of it more and more. If I just want to place a color, like if I just do like that, I'm just tapping it ever so lightly and it just sits on top of the color that was there before. So you sort of learn that your brush pressure is like massaging and it's whether you want the colors to become one or sit on top of each other. Yeah. Leona. Oh, that's in the lovely cat name. That's very cute. Bowie vibes? This does have very much Bowie vibes. And the model is an actor and he's fabulous. So it's definitely sort of in that realm. Although when I get into the eyes, the eyes are a bit sorrowful in this one. So that will be interesting to paint. We're not up to emotions yet. That comes later. We're just trying to find all the forms at the moment. Which, having these two key lights either side of the head gives a lot of angles to find the form in, which is really good. If anything, it's slightly too much, so I've just got to find the key moments and get them in. She's upset her brother ate her food. Oh, I do find that. My lovely nieces, who are two cats, they are quite complainy, especially one more than the other. Aren't they, Sally? Cats, cats let you know when something's going on. Like, dip on my dog, she'll give you looks. She'll give you looks and sort of humph, but oh, the cats, they, they let you know if something's out of sorts. She should have been quicker to eat her dinner. <laughs> Hello, 
I like the video you sent me the other day, Sally, of um, your cat whinging at you, Maggie. That was really cute. <laughs> very, very loud cats. When people say that cats meow because that's how they communicate with humans, that's definitely the case with your cats. They're not speaking cat language, they're speaking at you. And it's the reverse when it's wet food versus dry food. Yeah. Oh, Poppy. Well, that's what she gets if she annoys Maggie. She should pick her battles better. Hey, Burak, how are you? Did you see in the Discord I answered your questions? I'm so sorry I didn't see when you posted them. Oh. Oh, your cat's name. So, Sally's got two girls, so Poppy and Maggie. Um, and they're both ladies. Very cute. Yes. <laughs> yes. Poppy is the Poppy's my favorite because she always wants lap cuddles, and so she'll come up and sit on me and have lap cuddles, and I am very happy to oblige. Not that I have favorites in my nieces. No. 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 Would not do that. <laughs> also, Kathy, in our Discord, we've got a pet, um, a pet discussion group. So, if you want to ever post a picture of your cats, you're allowed to, because it's just gratuitous looking at other people's pets being beautiful. Because we all photograph our pets a sufficient amount. I'm not going to say too much. I'm going to say a sufficient amount. <laughs> yes, yeah, sorry, Sally is my sister. <laughs> she's my old, she's my big little sister because she's older than me but shorter than me. Yeah. Sally, I hope you don't mind me introducing you on stream. <laughs> Did not ask you that. Oh, Discord. It's like a private forum, basically. Um, so it's a little app you can download or you can just visit it in browser and everyone can make their own forum. And I've got one. It's just in the captions underneath my YouTube video. Um, and basically there, yeah, I can answer art questions. We can post what we're working on. We can sort of share links of things that are cool. And as well as that, you can share pit pictures if you want. <laughs> so it's just a way for, especially when on stream, I'm talking about a resource or a link or something. After the stream, I can go and post the link. So yeah, check it out. It's just in the description below. Um, yeah, and you can just come in and chat anytime. But some sections have a lot more stuff going on than others, but I don't know, I'm really, really enjoying it because I can share my work with you guys in a less public way. Um, cause obviously not all my works in progress and things like that I can show on Instagram all the time. And like my latest big piece, I haven't sort of put that on Instagram much at all yet. Cause I wanted it to be finished first and maybe try and make some videos of it being painted. Cause Instagram is all videos are more important now than pictures. Um, so yeah, it's been really nice to have a really casual place to hang out with you guys. <laughs> Ah, oh, Sally, look, Barack says I'm really nice. <laughs> my, my Sally is really nice too. We just tease each other a lot. <laughs> we have another sister too, but she will probably not be around to stream because she lives in New Zealand. So the time difference is weird. Also, she's working on a big project at the moment. So we will have to guest her on the stream another time. Or perhaps if she makes it to Australia. Maybe we could have a sister stream. <laughs> All three of us in a room. Working on something with the cameras. That would be actually really fun. <laughs> I'll just stick the mic in the middle and you guys will be sick of us in five minutes. Hey. That would actually be really fun though. Remind me of that if one, lockdown changes so we're allowed to have people in our house and two, Vicky makes it to Australia. She's not allowed to travel here yet. Hi, 
Hi Kat, how are you? We're slowly blocking in this new painting today. I say slowly because I have too much fun talking about random other things. Yeah, <laughs> as we do. Yes, the one who I went and visited in New Zealand a few months ago, that's my younger sister. So I'm the middle child. <laughs> Um, but yeah, no, unfortunately, New Zealand has currently suspended travel with Australia, so we're not allowed to travel between until Sydney, one of our other states, gets their COVID break outbreak under control, as it is currently not under control, and scaring us all a little bit. Yeah. Oh, yeah, no, that's fair, Kat, no problem. <laughs> oh, is your last name Hamilton? No. You're separate people. Now I'm confused. Oh, it is. Okay. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I was calling you Kathy. My bad. Do you prefer Cat as a nickname? I'm a big name shortener, as you can see by Liz instead of Elizabeth. Elizabeth is way too long as a name, so. Not the famous cat. <laughs> the cat and fine art, famous cat. What's wrong with that? Yee. Yeah. What have you been painting today? Are you still working on the really big green one? Or did you finish that one? That was the last one I saw in one of your videos, I think. <laughs> you know where someone knows you from by your name? Yeah, that's fair. The only people who call me Elizabeth are family members. Like, everyone else knows me from not family places. So it is weird when someone says, Oh, hi, Elizabeth, how are you? And I'm like, you know my parents somehow, and I do not remember who you are. Ugh. Oh, you finished that. Yay, congratulations. That was a huge painting. Well done. Deliver that on Sunday. Awesome. There's a lot of shadow under these eyebrows, so it will make sense. You just finished two paintings. God, I wish I was that productive. I have 99% finished my big one. But I have one detail to add tomorrow. And then I've got to finish this one and the other one that goes with this one. And a third one by like 20th of August. So it's all steam ahead over here. Why do we set these deadlines for ourselves? It's nuts. And yes, I'm already planning oil tober because I need more things on my plate. Yeah. <laughs> You have a show in Milan. Oh, that's exciting. That's awesome. Do you have some time to do that? Because you'll need to do time for shipping and all that too. Shipping is a pain in the butt. Not only financially, but logistically and stress-wise. I get so stressed when things are shipping. I've got two little pieces in America at the moment that I think I need to ask the curator if I can have those back because they didn't sell in the show and it's just always terrifying when things are in transit sort of lost all my shadow up here just gonna gradually bring that back due in November oh thank god you've got a bit of time oh it's digital Oh, that's even better. Then you don't need to worry about freight companies. Also, the paint can still be wet. <laughs> that's always my favorite thing about digital is that the paint can still be wet. And then you're just like, ha ha ha, drying to, oh, I just had a giant glob of white fall off the palette. Can you go back up there, please? I got a new brand of white paint and I don't know if I'm a fan because it's kind of runny and stringy. 
And I don't know if it's just this batch, or if it's just the first blob out of the tube, or what, but it's sort of the consistency of warm cheese. Like warm mozzarella. <laughs> Which is a strange consistency. I'm used to my paint being a bit stiffer than that. It's the language titanium white. And like I've got a bunch of other language paints and none of them are this consistency. But it's strange for a titanium white to be stringy. I don't know. I don't know. I don't want to slow the company because I really love the company, but maybe I just got a weird white. And Graham's Fast Dry White. Ooh. I haven't tried that one. We sell that one at my shop though. It's a problem. All the American brand ones are so much more expensive. Most of the time I stick with the Australian ones just because they're cheaper, but Fast Dry sounds nice. I like Fast Dry because that's why I use the Fast Dry liquid medium with all my paints like I'm using that at the moment I'm using the liquid fine detail as my medium because I like fast drying but I'm reluctant to replace like all my paints with alkyd paints because that's too much work and I have too many paints already an alkyd medium sort of does the job let's get some eyebrows going Okay. Eyebrows are interesting because you've got to sort of feather them in and you don't want them to be too solid. But at the same time, this particular model has quite strong eyebrows, so hmm. It's quite nice. It does start to get the characteristic stickiness after a bit. Okay. Okay. That's worth noting. This blob has probably been on my palette for two days, so maybe that's why. But it was definitely stringy straight out of the tube. So, I'm not sure. just has one really aggressive eyebrow. <laughs> Thank you. This is the thing about block-ins. They're sort of both satisfying and kind of frustrating because it's the ugly stage of the painting. But by using a transfer drawing, it's sort of got a little bit less chaos and more order. So you feel like you're accomplishing something, which is good. But ultimately, once I fill in all the sections, he's still going to look a bit rough. And that's fine, because he's the first layer of paint. Then I have all the time to make him look prettier. And more like himself. But... We've got to get past this first stage first. I don't know, I'm happy with our speed so far. We've been streaming for just under an hour, and I'm probably about... A bit under halfway around. That's not bad. That's not bad at all. Ryan Reynolds over Bowie. Oh, that's a compliment and a half to the model. Ryan Reynolds is a great vibe. I want to go see that new film where he's like an NPC in a video game. He's very much giving off that like hot Hugh Jackman dad vibes walking around in a polo shirt looking fine. You know when Hugh Jackman's on like a women's magazine and he just gives like hot dad vibes? Yes. It's definitely an aesthetic. Free guy. Thank you, Ick. That's the name of it. We should go see a movie. I have a voucher. Wait. 
I would be down for Friends movie night at some point. I don't know when. But that's something that we're allowed to do, which is nice. I'm not allowed to go over to each other's homes, but we're allowed to sit in a big dark room together. With masks on. Yay! Oh, they remind me to bring a blanket this time. I went and saw a movie with my sister and mum. And I was freezing the entire movie. Sally, were you freezing? I wish I brought a blanket. Someone in another row had this like beautiful big fleecy blanket on them and I'm like, you guys are smart. I had my handbag on my lap the entire time. I was just freezing. Do not know who's in charge with temperature control in the movies, but they were wrong. Yeah, it was cold. You may have been wearing more layers than me because you're better at wearing like scarves and stuff. Airline blanket, airline pillow and slippers. <laughs> yeah, we'll just go the full airline. <laughs> I don't know, I'm unsure about Black Widow. I think I'm kind of burnt out on action drama after Infinity War because that took so much out of me emotionally. <laughs> I just <laughs> feel exhausted by the genre. <laughs> Like, I think I'd be okay to go see the new Thor, because I know that's mostly comedy. Um, but, oh, Black Widow still looks like it's got intenseness. Gold class used to provide blankets. Yeah, well, so did the blood bank, and now they've got to take it all away because of COVID. <laughs> Although I have my own blanket for that. Yeah. <laughs> and it's a red blanket, because it's a bomber's blanket in the car. Blankets are just cozy. Why don't I have a blanket on my lap right now? That's just bad organization on my part. Ooh, do you want to see what I got in the mail? Let's do a quick, quick show and tell break. Um, let's use that camera. I got another shipment of dodgy paper. Can you see that? E because I wanted to trial a couple of the sheets um, and I wanted to trial a new gesso on them to see what I like and what I don't like and look at this one it's like a black and white experiment oh can you see that yeah it's so nice and I got two of those that's another one and it's sort of like he's put white pulp and black pulp in at the same time and just smushed it around and like it's super smooth on the other side but i really like this side so i might have to do some textured artworks and then what else did i get i got some like more white tone sheets oh you can't even see those sorry they're like more stand oh there you go more standard sort of recycly color and they've got all the lovely little craters in them and stuff and these show you the difference between he's got two screens that he uses to make them and one's really rough and one's really oh there you go so this one that one's the really rough one that's the old one this is the new one and that's so much a nicer texture for me to paint on than this bit so this bit i used to always make face the back because that's too textured for oil painting but now i can use both sides if i want to so then i can choose the prettier side which is awesome and then i also got some dodgy green because he uses green for all of his logos and everything. Oh, can you even see that? Not at all. Let me try the other camera. One sec. Mm. Green! Oh, that looks better. I should use this camera the whole time. So it's like a horrible, great, toxic neon green. So I almost feel like I need to paint a Ninja Turtle on that or something. I don't know. So next time we'll get a free paint night, I think I'll prep all this dodgy paper and we can do some practice ones before oil tip up. Yeah. Um, so that's exciting. So that's what I got those just the other day. And that's why now I've decided what I want to do for oil too. But you're going to have to wait and see for that. So I'm going to keep that under my hat for the moment. Right. Nickelodeon slime green. Perfect, Sally. Exactly that. It is exactly Nickelodeon slime dump it all over celebrities green. Yes.
Andro percent. <laughs> I did try those Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle pizzas that Pizza Hut was doing with the slime aioli and it was a little bit darker than that green, but it was amazing. Because it was meant to be like toxic waste all over your pizza, but it was delicious garlic aioli and I'm like, yes. No, pesto aioli. Pesto aioli. Wasn't the sort of thing you had to order twice, but once it was fun. Slowly adding a tiny bit of detail in here in terms of making sure I don't lose where my lights are. Using these tiny areas, that's very easy to do. Should be using a smaller brush, but I'm too lazy to do so. I think it's perfectly fine for us to blame Love of Pizza on Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. It was a hardcore marketing program. They mentioned it in every episode. Michelangelo was the coolest turtle. <laughs> and therefore, kids love pizza. A great marketing strategy. Same as we all give a damn about climate change and stuff because we grew up watching Captain Planet, right? Okay. Oh, that's too dark. Too dark. Magic school bus as well, yes. Sally has a Miss Frizzle dress, because she's amazing like that. And you need those sort of things in your life. Although, yeah, we watched the um, anatomy episode more recently and I didn't realize they were all like, so normally the digestive system, you'd keep going, but we're not going to do that. We're going to go back up to the nose to exit the body. And I'm like, that's such a cop out. You didn't even say we would normally leave through the butt. They just completely avoided it and then were suddenly at the nose. And I'm like, that's so silly. Oh, you have a 3D printer chameleon? Put a picture in the Discord. I haven't seen him. Have I seen him? I haven't seen him. That's awesome. What was the chameleon's name? Okay, was it Lizzie? Something like that. I have Harold in my head, but I'm like, no, Harold is the giraffe. The health giraffe. You made the IT guy work for you. <laughs> Yay! Her name is Liz. Yes. Okay, I did remember it right. Aha uh ha -huh, ha. Uh -huh. Liz Ard. That's great. Like that meme that's like my child will just be named Lizard, and then when people are like, oh Liz, is that short for Elizabeth? You're like, no, my name is Lizard. I wish I was that cool in school to just rename myself Lizard. That's what I should have done. And how edgy would that be as an artist name? Yes, my name is Lizard. This is my work. I am not that cool. That's better. So we've got a bit more of a transition on that cheek now. The colours are very intense, but they will gradually make more sense. All right, I'm gonna get a little brush out. Let's get this ear in. I like with the background's dry so I can lean on it. The mile stick's great, but it, for little paintings like this, it can be a bit cumbersome.
Harold that came to primary school and told kids to get in the dark van with strangers to tell us about healthy brush our teeth and not to talk about strangers. Yes, that Harold. The weirdest one was when we had the health ed van come in grade six and it was all anti-drug stuff. So Harold wasn't actually part of it. They, they did this whole presentation and all that in the van and Harold wasn't part of it. And at the end we were like, we are not leaving this van until you bring out Harold and sing a song with us. We are grade sixes and we don't care. We want Harold. <laughs> and so she made, she had to bring out Harold and sing an anatomy song because we wanted the kids content. <laughs> I felt so bad for that instructor because we were real little shits about it. We were just like, nope. We've just learned all about what heroin is and stuff like that and never to touch needles. You must give us our kids content. It is what we are here for. I loved that van. It was so much fun. The weird, dark, dark carpeted van. With the talking, it was like a, she was a female anatomy mannequin that you could like take out her organs and she talked and lit up. She was cool. I loved her. Yeah. The weird things that they bring to your school to get you excited about subjects, but it was great. Like the healthy... Is it the Life Health van or the Life Ed van? Or just the Harold van? I can't remember what it was called, but Harold looked exactly the same as the Giraffe Jeffrey from Toys R Us. And that was the weirdest part as you go to Toys R Us and you'd be all like, that's just Harold. Why is the same giraffe everywhere? Giraffe mascots ruled the 90s. Life Education Man, that's what it was called. I hope they still do that. I hope that's not, like, not a thing anymore, because that was great. I legitimately learnt things in that man. Even though it did have, you know, creepy overtones. As Sarah said. <laughs> Completely justifiably. Yeah. Swirly ear. He's starting to look a bit creepy because I've not filled in enough. I do apologize about that. This other ear is so bright, it doesn't even have any of the darks. I was gonna fill in the darks and I'm like, there are none. That is pointless. I definitely feel like I'm going to push the pinks more in this background. I sort of want it to have more of a relationship with this side of the face. Like this little bit of pink here is my favourite bit, <laughs> so it might end up with a lot more pink. But that's okay. Yeah, so can you see that on my brush, how it's got like little strings on it? The white is weird. It's just unlike any other white paint I've used. And like the second you pat it down, it's fine. It's just stringy. Very strange. I might ask language, I might send them an email and just be like, hey guys, is this meant to be like this? I'm a big nosy parker when it comes to art supplies, so I am not against emailing for answers. <laughs> Especially because art supply companies tend to be quite helpful. At least in the customer service department. Okay.
We almost got this year in. That's in here. It needs a lot more messing with, but that's fine. Everything does. Okay. Where do we go next? Probably the nose. The nose needs some love. Oh, and the eye. The eyes are satisfying, but they're also intimidating because I don't want to stuff them up. See, they just look so creepy when you just start an eye. <laughs> they have that effect. Zoom you guys in, can you see better? Oh, wrong way. There we go. Hopefully that's a little better. But again, this is why I'm saving up for a new camera, so then all this little detail will come out nice and clear. It's funny, when I was looking up all the camera review videos, so many of them are like focused on how good your face looks, and it's like, no, I don't want my face to look good. I don't care how my face looks. I want the painting to look really good. And yes, if I do replace, so the, the webcam that's on the painting is my current webcam, and the webcam that's on my face is Dr. Batman's like 2011 webcam from when I went overseas for a bit. So we got a webcam so we could web chat. Um, yeah, so if I replace the webcam with the digital SLR, then I'll be able to use the good webcam on my face. So it's a win-win. <laughs> and I won't use the dodgy old webcam anymore, which gives me half a face and half just bright white. <laughs> bright light. That's what I get for using my lighting, which I don't tend to use on the daytime streams. When we do the daytime streams, it's a bit easier to see everything, but then I have the bright window on the other side of my face, so I can't win. Chat? Chat? What is chat? I missed something. Well, you got a new webcam. Why haven't you swapped yet? Then you'll be able to see all of your details of your beautiful face when teaching. <laughs> Awful resolution is not a facial filter. That is not a good reason not to switch over to your nice new webcam. Especially when your new webcam you probably does support filters. I'm sure you could find a good one. Web chat with Dr. Batman? About what? I'm confused, Sarah. Sorry. I lost, I lost the thread that's happened there. Who needs makeup when the camera only has 14 pixels? Oh, no, we did web chat, Sarah. We were young and innocent then. I get you now. How dare you? Poor Lisa, who had to live with Jack when he was all pining and sad because I was overseas. Poor thing. Remember, I was in a share room with three other girls. Like, we could not get up to that much. <laughs> you and your winky faces. Ugh. Just to confuse everyone, Sarah's my sister too. So, yeah. 
choose my sister via Dr. Batman, but that doesn't make her any less my sister. So I just collect sisters and I have all of them. And it's great. Seriously, Sally, though, I'm sure your new webcam has the ability to support features where you wouldn't have to wear makeup. Isn't that kind of the point? Yeah, exactly. So get out your new gadget and play with it. New technology is fun. You were doing your laundry just before. You were being very productive, Sally. I believe in you being productive and doing the things, but you don't have to now because it's like late at night and this is relaxing things. Relaxing times. And yes, playing with your new phone. I am glad you're having fun. And I realized my coworker has the same pop socket as you because I'm like, that looks very familiar. So there you go. It's popular. Excuse me. Popular. <laughs> That's what I was trying to say then. And my body betrayed me. Hold on. Smooth face is not the same as pixely face, but it's all on whether they, you know, let the pixels do their thing or whether they try and fix it with with post technology. How's hot chocolates, Jess? Did you get there in the end? Did you get his hot chocolate despite bad puns? <laughs> I'm sure you could make the desktop Pokemon themed, Sally, if that's annoying you about your new phone that it's not Pokemon themed. We're on Delta Airlines. How strange. Oh, you delivered hot chocolate and now you're sleepy. And that sounds so cozy. So lovely and cozy. Sleepy is perfectly allowed. If you fall asleep, then it just looks like I paint faster. Because if you wake up and see the painting finished, then it's like magic. And then I feel a lot more productive. Right? It's like when you fall asleep in the car and then you teleport somewhere. So satisfying. So satisfying. Granted, not while you're driving. When you fall asleep as a passenger in a car, and then you teleport somewhere. <laughs> Should have specified that, shouldn't I? <sighs> Clearly getting that in. I definitely need to adjust some of these colours, but as long as the basics are in, that will do for this stage of the painting. And then I can fix it with glazes. So cosy! Dressing gown under a blanket, rocking on your recliner with a hot chocolate. Yes, you're winning at life. I love it. Yeah. See, I switched out my comfy chair for my productive chair. So I literally have one chair behind this chair. <laughs> because this was action, Liz, as opposed to this afternoon was comfy thinking about it, Liz. With the painting I was working on. 
sometimes you need that in a painting. You need to sort of sit back and get comfy in front of it and think about it. Unfortunately, that led me to disliking my painting this afternoon, but you know, that's <sighs> not the end of the world. I'm sure I will like it again eventually. Okay, so that's what other eye is basically in. I'll keep going around the nose and then we'll come up on the other eye. Hard not to just want to keep fussing with the eye because it's such an important part of the portrait, but I know I need to get around the whole thing, so just keep trucking. I don't think I have enough darks. I was like, I know I just said I would stop fussing, but how many times on this channel have I betrayed what I've just said to fuss with something? More than once. My mouth is definitely on one schedule while my hand is on another sometimes. Since I switched down to the little brush, I'm getting fussier now. I've got to fight that because otherwise we'll be here forever. The little brush just lets you be fussy. Also, yes, for the record, I should have worked from the left to the right because I'm right-handed and we're going to reach a point where I want to rest my hand and over here I can't because it'll go in wet paint. That's my bad. I'm silly like that. I did not think about it when I was painting this side of the face and having fun. That I should have been painting the other side of the face first. So learn what I say, not what I do. Always paint the away from your hand section and come towards your hand rather than the opposite, which just makes your life difficult for yourself. Oh, I don't like this track. I'm going to skip this one. With moany people. That's better. Um, okay, where are we now? Nose. This model has a fantastic nose. It's got like these little sharp bits and then very defined lobes. It's lovely. Even though at the moment it looks really weird, it will look better. Promises, promises, promises.
three more pink. is everywhere today. Behave, hair. When you're doing a transfer painting you've still got to pay a lot of attention to your reference for the lines so for example here i think i thought the shadow line was the edge of the nose instead of the actual edge of the nose so i'm just bringing that in because as i'm painting i noticed that even though i was following the lines i was wrong that's the thing sometimes when you're using transfer lines you just take the lines for gospel and sometimes fill it in incorrectly and then you get big drawing problems that will hit you later that's why even when you have guides you should still always pay attention to your source because the guides can trick you when you get too comfortable weird painting Ella Prima after I've been doing a painting that's like five to six layers for two months. <laughs> Just painting all in one layer seems so alien now. Because it is like a completely opposite method but it's still interesting. Like this will be a layered painting still it's just at the moment it would be considered Ella Prima or all in one sitting <gasps> Clayton how are you lovely to see you thank you I'm having a lot of fun with color in this face a lot of fun I was saying my model had two lovely key lights on them for the pose and they're just absolutely messing with me I do think I want the background to be a bit brighter because the contrast is a bit off, but I'm having a lot of fun. How are you? How has your day been today? Say hi to Erica for me. <laughs> I need to message her. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us on stream. 
If anyone doesn't know, Clayton is an amazing artist over at howtodrawcomics.net. So you've got to go check out the YouTube channel with all these amazing interviews and instructionals and everything you could ever want to know, not only about how to draw comics, but how to make comics, how to stick with comics as a medium, stick through large projects, lots of motivational stuff. Absolutely amazing channel and creator. So go check it out. Oh, I should make you a command. Started making commands. Where are we? Oh, I'll do it after stream. I'll do it after stream. I'll make you a command when you pop in. Anytime. I love doing plugs. They're fun. <laughs> Plus, I have too many amazing, talented friends that deserve plugging. Yeah. There we go. Okay, now that we're sort of fleshed out the nose a bit, I'm just going to move down into the lips and sort of join these sections before going back up into the eye, just because I want to make sure all these nice warm tones sort of stay nice and married. I don't want to sort of forget what harmonies and relationships I was using by bouncing too far away and back again. I find men's stubble really interesting in paintings because it like it's not so much a shadow as like lots of tiny bits of skin texture coming together to create colors. And like here I can see that like some of his skin was irritated from being shaved and some of it wasn't and it's like do, are those details do they matter? I don't know. Do they add to the narrative? Maybe. Will people understand that's what it means if I put in a bit of red and things like that? I don't know. But I like considering everything as I go. Whether I end up going with it or not, considering everything is still a really fun process in the painting. I think that's the part where I do question whether I stare at my reference a bit too intently sometimes. <laughs> Noticing where your stubble is irritated from being shaven, probably a little bit too intense, but eh, dear. My models know me well enough, hopefully, that it's all cool. Most of my models do. Getting a bit more of that red in on the edge of the nose. And then a bit of pink. Okay. Just making those shapes stand out even a little bit more. His nose just has so many nice little angles. It's awesome. Okay. He's also got a really nice sort of hero's chin with a little cleft in it, so we're going to have to make sure that that stands out. I really like how this model has such an interesting mix between hard and soft features, and I think that's one of the reasons I like painting him. So I think this is my third painting of this model. And I sold the last one, so, you know, fingers crossed. The last one I did even though I had a closed eyes, so I'm really glad this one has open eyes. 
Those days are lovely, but they're just a completely different mood. And when I want this one to really grab the audience emotionally, I really needed those open eyes to speak to you. Although I've already noticed I've made the eyes look at you, and the eyes in the reference are looking ever so slightly off, so I'm already messing with it a little bit. My bad. I don't know, I like confrontational eyes. They're more interesting. Well, apparently that's a thing, is that figurative painters in general sell less paintings with eye contact than they do without, because ones without eye contact are easier to live with in your home. And I'm like, how boring. They're more passive. Yeah, creative license. I'm gonna I'm move my eyes wherever I want the eyes. I have that license in my wallet somewhere, right? That's what I got for all my university money. Not that you need to go to university to get a creative license, but at least that makes me feel like I got something out of it. Hehehe. <laughs> something useful I should say. I got lots of things out of my uni degree but not all of them were useful. My favourite unit was still anatomical drawing. If I could go back and just do that unit another two times over I would. I think it is the evolution of the pen license. That's when it's like I now reject the idea of the pen and get to use whatever medium I so choose. I still think people should get a creative license on default. The way that you get a pen license if you don't pass the pen test but go up a grade. <laughs> or the teacher just doesn't want to read your work in pencil anymore. Yes, less eye contact apparently definitely sells better, especially if you notice when you walk through galleries and all those art fairs where they've got like huge amounts of art, really pay attention to the ones that sell and the ones that don't. And you'll find paintings of women tend to sell better than paintings of men. And then paintings without eye contact of women sell even better because then it's more, you know, the person can be looked at without feeling like the model is looking back at you and you don't get that confrontation feeling. So it's that whole active painting or confrontation versus passive. And I really like active paintings. I like ones that I engage with quite actively and I look at and they make me think and there's a lot of back and forth and I get a lot out of the painting. Meanwhile, some people really like passive artwork, which just sits there and looks pretty and it's a passing thought. It's a passing thing that you look vaguely at on your way past and it just makes you feel good. And there's a place for both. I definitely have some passive artwork that I love. I've got a whole lot of little paintings of eyes that I've bought of various artists and some of them are more passive and some of them are more active. But as an artist, I always want my work to do more. I want my work to really push and affect my audience. And I know that's a bit of an ask for people to then want to have that in their home. But if you have that moment with an artwork and it grabs you, how do you not want to keep having that? and analyzing that and delving further and deeper into it in a way that you only can when you exist in a space with the work. Maybe I'm crazy. Sorry, I'm going ranty now. No worries, sister, good night. You have a lovely night. Thank you so much for joining us on stream and chatting. It was really lovely. I'll see you on the weekend. Why? We're getting there, fam, we're getting there. Let me get these lips in. And then at least that's the majority of the hard features once I get the lips and the eye in. Then we can swing around the ear and then maybe switch back to the bigger paintbrush to go around the collarbone. Or oh, hiccups. Excuse me. Ooh.
There you go. An, an impactful artwork is one that grabs you. And yeah, I, I'm not surprised that you like that experience. Um, you do find a lot of people who are more active thinkers and active analyzers of artwork enjoy it. As opposed to, yeah, a lot of people want art just to be a comfort. Um, and I don't blame people who want art to be a comfort. Sometimes you just want comfortable things around you. You want a comfortable space in your home and that sort of thing. But I think you got to challenge yourself a little bit as well with art. You can't just relax in your comfort zone all the time because, I don't know, it's just not as interesting. <laughs> Is that weird to say? Uh, I don't know. Kind of like how I need to watch challenging TV shows sometimes as well as having, you know, a 45th free watch of Daria, the whole series, which has been what I've been watching the last two days because I needed comfort TV. But that's because I was doing more active thinking with my brain while painting, so... Again, there's a place for both. There's a place for active and a place for passive, but I like active art. And that's what I seek to create. Mm. Love going on rants like that. Thank you for letting me chat. <laughs> letting my mind wander. That's what makes me miss all the big galleries. <laughs> A mini personality test for guests and how they respond to your art. Yeah. A little bit. I know definitely some relatives have found my art a bit confronting and like for me I'm like no my art's not that confronting at all compared to other art that I've seen. Um, but that's everyone with their own opinions so I remember the first time I sort of showed life drawing to the family like my nudes. Some people found even just a nude figure too confronting and I'm like really? I'm so desensitized to that. <laughs> But I've never really seen the human figure as a bad thing. And I know some people have grown up in very oppressive environments where the human figure has been a terrible thing, so that must be hard to try and challenge. Oh, thanks, Clayton. So nice. Thank you. Okay, so we've joined Lips to Nose. Not perfect through there at all, but hey, we're not going for perfect, we're going for filling everything in. I know it looks like I'm just blacking out his teeth, but teeth are always much more in shadow than you think they are. So I prefer to sort of overdo the dark and then gradually bring in a bit of light then paint the teeth bright white and gradually bring in shadow. I don't know why this way round works better for me, but it does. I think it's just because teeth can look too bright so easily. They're a really fiddly thing to paint. Fiddly, fiddly, fiddly. That's what I sort of grew up with art attack tips and things like that about like, oh, never just draw all the teeth. Just draw like a line across the middle or like half a line and then a dot. And that gives you the illusion of teeth. And they were great little tips, but they don't quite work when you go to realism painting, unfortunately. Do you ever have some like art attack or those sort of like art tips from those original art books that just stick with you. I know one of mine is like when drawing a brick wall don't draw all the bricks just draw like little clusters of two and three bricks here and there and then it looks like a brick wall. That was one. How to mix skin color as a paint like you know generic white flesh tone because um, it was don't use just red and white you've got to add a little bit of yellow and a tiny bit of green. That was from Art Attack when I was a kid. 
I love how those sort of little things have stuck with me. So working our way down the chin, all of our colours are going to get a lot cooler. They're not as vascular as the centre of the face. Uh, they don't have as much blood and flush. as I say that, I add a bit more flush to the middle of the face. <laughs> because that's it's where it is required. Just going to skip this track as well, my apologies. And that one. That's better. There's a couple of tracks now and I just play through the whole playlist that I know I want to skip, but I can't like delete them off the playlist without making a whole new playlist. Because chill hop be like that. Excuse me for skipping. How we get there? Alright, now we've got this interesting little bend in the lip where it sort of goes dark and then light again. So that's why I've got this weird gap at the moment, but we'll marry that up. side. I probably don't need to include yet but I'm gonna include because I'm enjoying the blue light. <laughs> All right. Now that that's in let's sort out this chin. Oh that bottom lip definitely needs to be lighter. It's too dark. values I'm going to sort out in the next layer. This is definitely... It's sort of the opposite of a grisaille. Rather than me doing just the values in one layer, I'm sort of mapping out all my colours and then I'll adjust all the values in my next layer with glazes. I don't know if that way of working has a name, but let's just call it like the anti grisaille because it is the opposite. I could have done a grisaille for this painting, but I was too excited about colour. Like, the transfer drawing has saved me a bunch of times, so I think it's okay that I jump straight in with colour. This is all getting a bit dark down there, but I'm sure it'll make sense. I'm just going to switch to the big brush for a sec. Because the little brush I'm using is an angle cut, not a filbert, so it's not leaving the nice smooth transitions the way that this one does. For large areas of skin. Ooh, it's getting chilly in here. Alright, next stream, I'm bringing a cozy blanket because the sound of everyone else getting nice and cozy is lovely. Mm. 
it's definitely cozy vibes in here. Bit too much blue, but. Okay. He's dreamy? Oh, that's nice. <laughs> I wanted him to have a bit of a, I don't know, wistful, dreamy sort of quality, I guess. Because with these two paintings being dusk and dawn, they're sort of like an allegory for time as well as emotion. So yeah, I don't know. I sort of want one to be more optimistic than the other, but we shall see. I think that's the thing I keep finding with all these lockdowns is like how you perceive time and where you're sitting in the middle of time and all that sort of thing. It's such a way that affects your mood. Because even though like my lifestyle doesn't change that much other than seeing friends and family, um, my day to day working from home and things like that doesn't change too much, whether it's locked down or not, but my mentality changes dramatically. Um, and whether it's the start of the lockdown, the middle or near the end, that also affects my mentality a whole bunch. And it's something that I found really interesting through this process of lockdown, not lockdown, lockdown, not lockdown, is how much just the illusion of the time or the illusion of the control really affects me. Um, but yeah, these pieces sort of play with that idea. They're using times of the day as like allegories for mood. I keep finding that word allegory comes up in my work a lot and I'm wondering whether I should use it for titles. <laughs> It's like there's a tradition in old school or master paintings to be all like allegory of painting, allegory of music, when it's sort of someone to do with that theme. Um, whether I could use it for allegory of lockdown, allegory of dread, allegory of feeling stuck between multiple emotions. I don't know. Sort of interesting. Yeah, all these sort of lockdowns and the pandemic in general, it does put priorities and mental strength into perspective. It has been kind of a wake up call, but it also sort of hasn't. I don't know. It, I find it very interesting how some people seem very affected and some people don't, but... Or some people almost have like found themselves in this time in a negative or a positive way. I don't know. It's. A, it's definitely a life-changing event. I think this is sort of an event that has affected everyone around the world, regardless. And it's interesting to have something that's so universally changed people's lives happen in our lifetime. I hope it's the only thing that happens like that in our lifetimes, because I don't want to be going through any world wars or anything, thank you very much. The chin's still a little bit dark, but we're getting there. Oh, you guys can't see the shoulder. Hold on. Let me see if I can move you down. Just gonna move you down to there, because I'm starting to go into the collarbone and stuff. There we go. Uh, I need more Naples yellow. Where are you? Naples yellow, green, the other one. 
Oop, just put my finger in wet paint. Bad choice. Naples Yellow has always been one of my go-tos for light-coloured skin, simply because it lightens without making things go chalky the way that Titanium White does. Some of my early paintings you'll see they have a real yellow bent, and that's because I used Naples Yellow for three quarters of the painting, and I only used white for the absolute highlights at the end. And I don't think it's necessarily a bad thing, I think it's part of just how I like to mix colour. Yes, the good and the bad. Sometimes chaos sparks change. Yeah, chaos definitely sparks change. For better or for worse. <laughs> Trying to stay positive in your thinking has also been a powerful tool that's been hard to master. That's very true, but it's a noble, it's a noble cause. So the more you can sort of, I don't know, get get your brain thinking in a positive manner. If that makes you feel good, it's really good skill to have. I find it very hard to tell my brain to go in one direction or the other. It does what it wants to do and then I suffer the consequences <laughs> a lot of the time, but I'm working on it. I'm working on it. I'm just going to shift this up so I can get to the actual bottom. It's the only thing I find with the ledges on these easels, they don't let you get to the bottom edge all the time. Gamblers Portland Greys, yes they are. They're very cool though. Both of those. Very, very cool tones. I've had a look at them a couple of times. I think I've got one of them. I think I've got the blue tone one. I tend to use more of their radiant range than anything. What was the one I got recently? They brought out something new recently that I wanted to try. But it was only available from their shop, which shipping to Australia is an absolute ouch. What did they bring out? No, not Sydney Art Store. Ugh. Stupid advertising. Sydney Art Store is so overpriced. What did they bring out lately? What else? Something. Oh. The Earth Tones? I've got one of the Earth Tones. One of my friends bought me one for Christmas, which was awesome. Um, which one was it? The Iron Violet? It's a very transparent colour. Like, a very, very transparent colour. Um, so yeah, oh Yin Min Blue, that's what they brought out. That's the one I want to try. It's so expensive, but it's so pretty. It's like a super intense, true blue. Um, which yeah, it's like a mix between Cobalt and Ultramarine and that sort of thing. But oh, it's so vibrant and stunning looking. Oh, would it be bad to buy myself an art? No, I'm saving up for a camera, Liz. Bad. Bad, bad, bad. I'm saving up for a camera. <laughs> yeah, no, the other Earth Tones, I'm a bit hesitant on them just because I think they're a bit too muted for my tastes, but that's just me. I still think they're beautiful colours and the way that they're actually reclaiming Earth Minerals into oil paints is awesome. Oh, you've seen the mixing videos with the Inman Blue? Oh! I love mixing videos. And that's the thing, a really robust, intense blue like that. I've got them in acrylics, like um, China Blue made by Matisse in their background colours is the most intense blue ever. But if I want to preserve it in an oil paint, I've got to leave that section open. And it's really hard to leave sections open when they're a matte paint like that, because even if you get a bit of just clear oil on them, it loses that intensity. Um, I got rid of my reference photo and then kept staring at screen going, why don't I see what I want to see? I'm a dumb. Um, yeah, so if I could get an oil paint that would work like those acrylics, that would be red. But it's $75 for a tube and I'm saving up for a DSLR so you guys can see my paintings better on stream. So, priorities. 
Yes. You're only as horrible an influence as I am, Kat. <laughs> I'm just as bad with recommending stuff all the time, aren't I? Oh. Might ask the boss if he can get in and at work, then I can just leave it out the back until I can afford it. <laughs> sneaky, sneaky. I have only tried maybe two colours in the Daniel Smith oils, and one of them was one of their metallic colours. I think it was a metallic magenta or something? I got two. I got a metallic magenta and a metallic cyan, and I gave the cyan to a dear bit friend of mine, because cyan is one of her favourite colours. Pink is her other favourite colour, which made me feel a bit bad for keeping the pink, but... <sighs> I wanted to try one, so I did. Um, either way. It was interesting. It was a very thick paint. It probably isn't very indicative of their normal paints and textures and things like that, but it was okay. Not something I reach for very often. At all. But I haven't tried any of their other colours because they don't sell it in my art shop. And my art shop, the prices are the best. So. You have the cobalt teal blue. Ooh. The metallics are really interesting. The other metallic one I have of theirs is like a graphite. And that one is really cool. This sort of like grey sparkle. And just, I used that in a black and white painting that I did, and it's really subtle, but it was really powerful. And it added a whole dimension to the painting, because it sort of sparkled as you move. But not in like a generic glittery way, in this really sort of subtle way, which I really enjoyed. So it didn't look like gimmicky, it looked like it was meant to be, and it was looked like hard to identify why it was sparkling. So, I liked that a lot. That was fun. <laughs> Yes, yum. Very, very poisonous, but yum. And you do have to be careful with those metallics because they actually contain aluminium and things like that, but you know that. You don't want to sand them or do anything where it is aspirated or get it on open wounds or things like that. All right. We're going okay. There's a lot of little things I want to adjust, but that is normal for this stage of the painting. I need to just keep soldiering on. I'm going to play with that nose so much, I know I will. Half because it's wrong and half because it's just fun. Great nose. All right. Let's get this neck going. There's like a tiny bit of the purple light coming down here on the shoulder, but I definitely don't have... I haven't licked the purple colour correctly yet, so we might have to mess with that. Where's that brilliant pink colour? Vibrant magenta. That might sound what I want. No, that's not what I want. That's like a baby pink. Yes, these are for a show. Sorry, 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 cat. Um, We're having a group show at one of the local galleries that I love, Off the Curve Gallery, um, called Human Condition. And it's four artists who all paint with the human form. Um, and we're all doing sort of three to four works. So this is one of my three. And then the other landscape, cloudscape that we did the other day is the other one. Blech. This blob does not want to stay on the palette. Let me try a bit of ultramarine in here. 
Oh, purple. The way I want you to. I use you. That's really dull. Ugh, I'm gonna have to play with this purple. I want a vibrant purple, and this just keeps going lavender on me. Yeah, see, that's way too dull. Yeah, so the show is on, I think, end of August. Um, but the pieces, at least one of the pieces, needs to be done like ASAP for the um, for contention for the exhibition invite. Because we don't know which one's going to go on the exhibition invite between the four artists. Normally there's two images that go on the exhibition invite. But if I can have one of them be mine, I always do like that. It is good promotion. So yeah, between this one and the one on the desk, I'll sort of make a decision this weekend which one I want to try and finish. Um, and that'll be the one I'll submit for possibly going on the exhibition invite. And then I need to get started on the third piece, which I haven't started yet. Because I've sort of been waiting to see what happens with lockdown, because if I can't get to my framer... So these ones are actually painted on wood cradle panels. See how it's got the edge? And that was simply because it didn't need framing. So if I couldn't get to a framer, then I knew two of my pieces were safe. But if I want to do the third painting on aluminium, then it needs to be framed. Um, so if I make that decision, I need to make sure that I've allowed time for framing. Which at this stage I have, as long as I get that other painting started soon. By like mid next week. Yeah, it's been kind of all tight deadlines lately, but that's okay. We're getting there. Because what day is it today? It's the 29th today, isn't it? So tomorrow I've got to enter that other art competition that I wanted to enter with those piece, with the big piece that I finished and do a bit of a paperwork day, which we all have to do sometimes. Ugh, paperwork. And then I can spend the rest of the weekend painting around it does keep you on your toes, for sure. For sure. My main thing is I've sort of given myself September off. Not only because we've got some big family events, like some nuptials and things like that coming up, which are very exciting. Um, but I want to be able to prepare for Oiltober and have lots of rest in, in September, so then I'm ready for Oiltober. Because um, I'm going to have to prime all my paper and like I wanted to make a little intro for YouTube videos and catch up on editing oh for sure I've got probably four YouTube videos all filmed and just not edited because I skipped posting last week because I had to finish the painting the big one um yeah so September I might put out a few more YouTube videos for sure so I apologize if it's a little bit thin on my normal uploads, but at least we've got the live streams now, which I'm really enjoying. Yeah, Sarah, I was talking about you. Little Miss Bride to be. Do you know how nice it is looking forward to knowing I don't have any art deadlines in September? I'm just like, I just get to enjoy myself and have fun and focus on the important stuff and wear my ski boots because they're nice and warm and I'm totally not wearing them around the house like Ugg boots. They're so comfy. Also, I figured out why they're so dark. Turns out I didn't order the grey ones, I ordered the black ones. Because I'm a twit and changed my mind last minute when I was ordering. So, I apologise. That's why my boots are very dark grey. Because apparently they're not the light grey ones that I thought I was looking at. I'm a dumb. I'm a silly, I should say, sorry. I'm a silly. Oh, he's coming along. I'm happy with how this is going. It is a long dress. You are correct. And it'll be snowy, hopefully. So, you know, all the boots will get caked in snow anyway. 
You should message me about your days off when you know them. Because I asked you the other day and you didn't know them yet. And I don't know if you know them yet. Reminder. So we can go look at the long dress and see whether it is actually too long on me. Because I bet you it'll be just right. Because I am a tall girl. <laughs> Sorry guys, talking about bridal stuff instead of art, but it's fun! Yeah, that neck's looking alright. We're getting some shadow in there, some shape. We've got to lighten up a lot because we're losing all this shadow just after the collarbone. Oh, you're doing rosters tomorrow. No worries. Message me when you know. That sounds good. I feel like your life is rosters and that's just not fun sometimes. But at the same time, you are very good at what you do. <laughs> I don't know, Kat. I don't know if some people want to hear about wedding stuff or not. I just sit here and talk to the internet because you guys are all so lovely. I don't know what you actually want me to talk about unless you ask me a direct question, in which case I'm always happy to answer direct questions. Just so you know. <laughs> oh, it's fun here. Thank you so much for coming and having fun with me here. I enjoy it. I think that's the thing that I'm really grateful for since I've started live streaming is how much, even if I'm having a bad day, I know once I get on with you guys and start working, I know that it makes me feel good. So even if I feel kind of blah before I start streaming, I'm like, nah, it's still worth doing because I know I'll feel better once I start. Kind of like life drawing. Even if I've had a blur day and I go to life drawing, I feel so good while I'm doing it. It energizes part of me. Like, I've been painting all day and my arm has been really sore. But this is great. I'm really enjoying this. That was way too much pink. Bad. Ah, Doing your invite was so much fun. That was freaking adorable. Tis my pleasure, Sarah. Anytime I can help with that sort of stuff, you know I can. It brings me joy to be able to help and bring your vision to life of what you want for your wedding. You and your Jack. And seriously, it's going to be such a fucking cute wedding. You know when a bride and groom really make it their own? It's just like everything is so much cuter because you know it's all them. Love it. <laughs> you haven't? It's on my fridge! Jess, how have you not seen my fridge? You've been over to my house so much. I, I imagine not lately, obviously, because we've been in lockdown and you haven't been allowed to come over, but it's on my fridge! This is where you see these things. Okay, your wedding invite was still in my wardrobe all last year for some reason. I think I found it in one of my coat pockets, and then it just lived in my wardrobe for a year. I'm pretty sure it's still in my bedside table because I didn't know where to put it. <laughs> I can send you a digital copy if you want, Jess. <laughs> I do have a puppy that demands attention. That's true. She is quite the distraction. Um, <laughs> to visitors. Although, oh my god, she's, she's very eager to jump on people when she sees them. And now she's progressed this to... Yesterday, I took her for a walk at a park next to the grocery store because I'm like, oh, I'll walk around the park and then she'll be happy to sit in the car while I go into the grocery store. So that was the plan. And this guy came up with his hoodie on and he kind of looked like how Dr. Batman, when he gets home, puts his hoodie on and wrestles with her. And she just wanted to jump all over this guy. And I'm like, dude, I'm so sorry. She's just very excited. And she was just like standing full erect, bouncing on two legs going, let me hug this guy. And I'm like, it's not dad. Calm down. 
Oh, she was so bouncy. We ended up doing two laps of the park because she just had so many beans. And then just after I got her back in the car and went into the grocery store, it absolutely bucketed down with rain. So we like all had some good luck on our side yesterday, which was nice. She is a very good distraction, but sometimes too much of a distraction. <laughs> She's so pooped today after being at puppy play care all day though. Oh, she's so pooped. You gotta bring Darwin up to puppy play care one day. He would love it. Although I suppose it's pretty much the same as when he hangs out with his pack all day. Hanging out with big dogs. They had a great day in there today. I love that they post photos at like 4.30 on the puppy play care um, Facebook page so you can see all the puppies having fun. Dipper only made it into one photo today because obviously she was too busy to come and look at the person with the camera. But I've gotten some great little selfies of her and like up close shots. We're almost there with this collarbone. Collarbone's sort of a hard one because I don't want there to be too much going on down here because I want the focus to be on the face, but I need there to be enough going on down here that it looks like I've put the same amount of effort in as the rest of the painting, otherwise it just looks sloppy. So, it is an interesting mix to try and achieve. I might end up changing the purple light to a peach light. I think that would work better with the background. That artistic license thing again. Peach and cyan, I think, go quite well together. If I just chuck, like... Yeah, I think I like that better. Right, I'm gonna leave that there as a reminder. And next time, because I sort of need all this paint to dry now, because it's got too much saturation on the board, but... And then it would work a bit better with the other one, because the other one uses this peach colour on one side as well. Ah, oh, they both use the same ring lights then. Okay, yes, no, I like this. If I use the peach on this side, then they both have the matching lights, but they're opposites. The other one has the blue coming in from this side. Oh, I like that. I like that. Okay, sorry, rambling. Rambling. Bring some more of that iron down into the shoulder. There we go. Saturation moisture. So, the colours I want to change, but if it's already too moist, then sometimes you can't keep painting over it as much as you want to. You sort of hit a point where it's all too moist and that's where some people say they end up creating mud because they add so many colours on top of each other that all the paints mix together in an unpleasant way and they make mud. Um, or rather they create a mix of colours which is unintended that they don't like. So if I let it dry then I can just keep going over the top and this will only take like two or three days to dry tops because it's painted fairly thin with the quick dry medium. It's not quite as thin as I normally paint but that's because I'm blocking in so I want to have some good coverage of paint. Um, yeah! So once this dries then I can just go over the top and adjust everything and then after that I'll probably have one last layer of doing highlights and adjustments. So this should in theory be a full layer painting. The first layer was the background, second layer is the block in, Third layer is, you know, full adjustments. And then the final layer is highlights and little final adjustments. But that last layer is like much less work. Because it's just all the fun little bits. So yeah, four layer painting. Sometimes you can squeeze that out in two weeks. 
Um, the fact that I've already done one of the layers means that, yeah, two weeks from now, this should definitely be finished. Because I've only got, this is, I've only got two layers to go after this. Um, and this layer and the next layer are really the workhorses. So that's where most of the effort goes into. So, yeah. That's sort of my planning with this and having the transfer drawing and all that sort of thing has helped that schedule hopefully come true. Oh, like... Yep. Ah. Oh. Oh, Liz, finish this shoulder. Stop creeping up the face. Just finish it. You should come over for a paint one day as well. I think you would enjoy it. Set you up with some oils to have a go. It would be fun. Yes, I used the word twood. Yes, but you see, stick figures are not a prerequisite to oil painting, so you're fine. <laughs> stick figures, in fact, hinder oil painting, because indoor oil painting is about blocks. And chunks. So ha 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 ha. Hi Ken, how are you? How's things? You can paint some nice squares, there you go. That's blocks, that's chunks. That's exactly what you need for oil painting. And we've been doing a block in painting tonight. So this one was just outlines when we started. We started with a transfer drawing. And now I'm getting around. I've only got hairline and an eye and an ear to go. Jess, you can accidentally paint yourself. I'd be okay with an accidental self-portrait. Don't you reckon? Ah, oh, Santani, my love. <laughs> we didn't end up organizing. Are we? Are we going for a walk tomorrow? Get Tani to message me about are we going for a walk tomorrow? Because that was a loose plan, and then lock down things, and then I don't know what happened. But I would be down for going for a walk. Yeah. My pup is good. She's been at puppy play care today, so she's very tired. I think at puppy play care, she forgets to drink water and she forgets to have breaks because she's having so much fun with the other puppies. And then she gets home and just hits the wall. Or today, even she got in the car and she just lay straight down and went to sleep, which was insane. <laughs> hey Jess, if you can spill paint and it comes out as a self-portrait, that's just even more talented. How dare you be hiding this talent from me this whole time? Just saying. It's a bit rude. Also, that's definitely a, you know, more creative form of art than realism painting, is covering yourself in paint. Very creative. <laughs> yeah. I was saying as well, the, the puppy play care posts photos of the pups playing and I only got one photo of her today because she was obviously having so much fun with the other puppies. She didn't come up to the lady with the camera <laughs> like she has in previous weeks. So my little art assistant is doing very well. I've actually got a um, spare mattress, a spare single mattress in the art room with me now 
it's up against the wall at the moment, but normally she comes in and sleeps on that and that has been very good. So she's a lot more comfortable in the studio now. She's sort of figured out not to come near the easel or near the computer because that took a little bit of teaching. Um, and she had a fright once when my palette fell off the easel, but we're past that now and she trusts the room a lot more again, which is great. <laughs> so very, very happy. And she's officially six months old now. She had a birthday back at the 16th, so that's exciting too. All right, let's get into this ear. I'm gonna move the camera up again because we're gonna have to go back into that hairline. Okay. Okay, ear first. Now this ear is very brightly colored compared to the other ear. Oh, and I've got to stretch the pinky to lean. No, I'm going to bring out the mild stick for this one. Oh. Awkward! <laughs> it was on the back of the easel. Um, so that's one other thing that scared Dipper once was the mild stick falling down because I used to have it always sit on the front of the easel. So I quickly learned to put it on the back of the easel so she doesn't accidentally knock it while she's sniffing around. The magic stick! The magic golf club, thank you. That's my mile stick. I think this is like tape that you put on shovels to make the grip more comfy, but it works quite well to make the mile stick sit on the easel better. Yeah. Forgot to take it to life drawing the other week and I was suffering so bad. I needed a leaning stick. I ended up using another paintbrush, but then it's like dual wielding paintbrushes and it's just really awkward and it doesn't hang on to the easel so you have to hold it the whole time like this i can put down and it just sits there and my hands are free and that's why i like it having the hook on the end but if you use like a traditional mild stick or a paintbrush or just a stick you have to hold it the whole time as opposed to just directing it it is a pain Okay, this is the part I hate about short hair, is trying to paint it with spiky bits. Spiky bits are just awkward. Same as like stubble on a face, it's just really awkward. But I did say I was painting the ear, didn't I? Uh, let me zoom in. <laughs> I get so easily distracted by myself. It is a bit follow the dopamine to a point and then you hit a point where you just know you're avoiding parts that take more effort. <laughs> you know when you follow the dopamine around your house and then you end up with like five jobs that you just don't want to do and you're like the whole system is ruined because these jobs need to be done and I've finished all the fun things. That is the only flaw with follow the dopamine. There's not a particular reason why I've left these parts. I was saying before, I've sort of painted it backwards by accident. I should always paint the left side first because I'm a right-handed person. And that means I won't accidentally lean in the part that I've painted. But I decided to paint this eye first and therefore I have stuffed up that system. So, Cam, I was a bit backwards in that way. <laughs> um, but yeah, most of the time I tend to block in the large areas of skin first because they blend into the areas of detail. So like if I didn't have the forehead in and I tried to do the hairline, then that area where the hairline meets the skin wouldn't quite make sense. Um, yeah, so most of the time it's sort of skin and then working towards detail. But yeah, we've sort of gone in a weird little circle tonight. 
A bit. Yeah. That's not a bad thing. Just adjusting. Which I shouldn't be doing, but I am. your day Cam what did you get up to today yeah I did have the dark sort of stuff on my brush so I sort of kept going around with that a fair bit that is true but then I avoided things like that eyebrow even though I had the dark on my brush so sometimes my methods are more madness but yeah we're getting there where are we up to? Two and a half hours. Oh, I thought tonight was going to be a short stream. I thought I was going to be so fast. I was wrong. Let's see if we can finish the whole thing in under three hours, eh? Goals. Oh, you did some teaching and cadet work and unpacking return uniform. Fair enough. That sounds like you had a good day between fun things and, you know, chores sort of things. <laughs> that sounds like a very productive day, Cam. Well done. Get a gold star. <laughs> Thank you, Olivia. That's really nice of you. Madness methods. At least, at least the paintings are okay. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> That's really nice. Thank you. Oh, you make me giggle. I think that's the thing when people ask me about teaching, like painting, because I haven't been formally taught. This is what I can offer. I can offer sort of madness ramblings. And talking about my experience but i don't have the instruction knowledge to say this is right and this is wrong necessarily um because my knowledge is sort of from here there and everywhere so i find this very nice to be able to just speak more freely hi jack how are you yes this one is a bit bright isn't it i kind of love it that way though nice and vibrant this one's like meant to be sort of during dawn, even though he's so bright, it's sort of this interesting from night to day feel of him having so much intensity in his skin. So even though he's not as pale as the background, which I thought he was going to be paler, I still actually really love it. Yeah. How are you, Jack? How was your day? Do you work today? My guess is yes. Oh, you just woke up from night shift. Fair enough. <laughs> that is absolutely fair enough. Dr. Batman had a um, half day today, so he's actually caught up on sleep a little bit, which has been really nice. He went down for a nap and then his watch ran out of batteries, so his alarm didn't quite go off. <laughs> Which is fine. Sometimes you need a catch-up day, right? Catch-up month. How's your fluff today? I didn't ask Sarah that earlier. How is Mr. Darwin? Yes, he does need it. He always needs it. I just realised this other eyebrow got a bit wild. I'm just going to tame it a tiny bit. Catch up sleep month, she agrees. I'm glad. <laughs> I thought you were going to talk about catch up Friday. Uh, 
Yes. See, I feel like most of us are meant to have had breaks during these lockdowns, but it doesn't feel like breaks. It feels like stress. So we still need the catch up months. Oh, he's away with his pack. Fair enough. Off being a big boy. That is fair enough. Do you guys have to pay for dog sitting when he does that? Or no? It's just like a friendship arrangement. That's really nice that you have sort of an outlet for him. I was just saying us sending Dipper to doggy daycare is pretty similar. <laughs> he goes and just goes to be batshit crazy for a while with other puppies. Supervised, but batshit crazy nonetheless. <laughs> Love, affection, and PJs, that is a perfectly reasonable transaction. I think that is a lovely arrangement. Good work. Oh, can I ask, does PA still do the plus size range, or have they sort of gotten rid of that? A certain puppy keeps eating my pocket where there's an embroidered dachshund and tore a hole in my pants. Because she rude. Well, yeah, that's what the hens is, isn't it? <laughs> a pre-hens. That's a good idea, actually. Yeah, that would be a good idea. Um, we're free on the weekend, if you want to do something on the weekend. Again, do your rosters first, and then we'll figure out when you're free. <laughs> and we'll go from there. So put that as priority two after dresses when rosters are organized. Oh! Expanded the range. Okay, I'll have to have a look at the website. Because the only thing that annoyed me last time that I looked was the range was smaller and um, all the pants had those tight cuffs at the bottom and I like loose pants. So hopefully there's some loose pants. I will have a squeeze. This doesn't count as me not saving up for the camera. The camera is still priority number one. It's just I need to replace a pair of pajama pants that are somewhat chewed by a certain puppy. Besides, if I get them for Christmas, that wouldn't be the end of the world either. Ask the husband. I've been very good. Please, pajama pants. And thank you. There we go, we've got 20 minutes, we can do this. We don't have to finish in 20 minutes, but I reckon we can finish in 20 minutes. That's the, the thought. The side of his forehead does not have as much shape as the other side. Someone's PJ scrolling. No! Sarah! I thought you were relaxing. You should be relaxing. Oh, Jack, have you been watching Sarah play The Room? I think you would dig it too. Although maybe not the same way Sarah does. With those mad puzzle skills.
I feel like you like games that are more of skill rather than puzzle. Is that correct? Is that a good assumption? Like more objective games. Where you have an objective and you go do that. Yeah, that's better. The hairline had crept in too much. I haven't got up and stretched tonight, and I'm starting to feel it. We're so close! <laughs> Yeah, skill games or non-thinking games. That's fair. Some other time, maybe even Christmas, you know like how we like to pick a game at Christmas so we can avoid doing dishes and sit in the front room and play games? We should do something like The Room, that would be fun. I don't know if Lisa's played it, she probably has, but it's still fun. <laughs> Pre post wedding if we get cool hangout time, that would be lovely. I know you guys have to do a lot of family time stuff and obviously probably want to ski, but if we have just chill out, hang in room time, that would also be fun. Before or after. Okay, that's an eye. Just a bit of one. Sorry, skipping the song. Do we keep repeating the same songs? Ah, oh, it didn't load more songs. No wonder we keep repeating songs. I didn't realize I had to scroll down to load more. I'm sorry, guys. I will have to remember that for next time. Keep scrolling. <laughs> Upgrade board games! That sounds lovely! I thought all the main crew were staying. Like... The Karens and like Jack's brothers. No? I know a lot of the, like, out-of-towners and stuff probably wouldn't stick around, but... It would be really nice just to have, like, a PJ night, like, afterwards, or a PJ afternoon. And just chill. That would be quite fun. Ooh, that was way too bright. Okay, let's calm that down. Add a few more highlights. <laughs> Most people are just staying until Sunday. Oh, okay, cool. Ending Sydney, yeah. Yeah. Did you find out if you were able to go to New South Wales, Jack?
Like, not talking about people coming here, but you going there. My boss at work was just like, anyone who needs to go to Sydney should just get a transit van, because no one's pulling over the vans at all. You can just go straight on through the border if you're in a transit van, and they're just like, eh! So you had to do some deliveries right at the start of lockdown, and he did and had no problems, and I'm like, that was really risky. Ugh. But he did get tested when he got back because he got a cough, so at least he got tested and came up negative, so that was good. The nose is a bit too pink, but we can calm that down later. That's fine. Let's finish this ear that I keep avoiding, because it's so far over to the left. We're getting there, folks! We're getting there! Yeah. And again, the super motivation of streaming with all you lovely people amazes me because we've been able to get this full block-in done and my other painting, the twin to this, I haven't finished the block-in yet and I started the block-in yesterday. <laughs> Granted, I was working on another painting, but my concentration did not allow me to sit down and do it all in one big hit the way that this has, so I am very thankful. His nose could be a bit sunburnt, or maybe he just woke up and had the sniffles. <laughs> Good, but we'd not be allowed back. Oh no. That's a pain. Damn. Oh, that sucks, Jack. I'm so sorry. I didn't even think about re-entry. It's more the issue. Uh... I'm so sorry. That's a really shit situation. Hmm. Stupid Sydney. I do apologise if anyone in here is from Sydney and maybe hasn't been chatting. I'm just... the principle of how this spread has happened is just frustrating. As I'm sure you've seen with any commentary from any Melbourneians, we're just frustrated that it's come to this again when we've lived this before. I love this part of a painting where everything's wet and you can just ever so slightly adjust things so easily by just bringing in a little bit of light or a little bit of dark. You can just nudge it just a bit. It is what it is. That's very true, but the empathy is here. <laughs> Sorry, man. As much as we're all in survival mode and empathy is hard at the moment because we're all just trying to get through day by day. Still a shit situation. Whoa, he's getting there. The other fun thing about a transfer drawing is you do get that satisfaction of a likeness a lot faster. And I feel like this has the likeness of my model, which is lovely. It makes me feel good. No worries, man. All right, let's get this hair in. What are we doing for time? Nine minutes, eight minutes. Ah. Maybe, okay, don't rush this. Just get it done. Okay, we're just gonna do lots of little flicks because boys have spiky hair. Yeah. You notice me sort of smudge it out with my fingers. That's just to make the hair look a bit more natural. Because if I do it all as little boop, 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 
He looks like he's wearing hair gel from the 90s. In the spikes. Also, if anyone wasn't sure, with the transfer drawing originally, I used what's called Sarol paper, which is like a white chalk paper. It comes in other colours, but I usually use the white. Um, and that's why it's hidden so well under the paint. Um, if you use darker colours, or like some people draw on their canvas with grey lead before they start, it can be really hard to cover. So I prefer this white chalk because it's very easy to cover. And even if I don't cover it in this first layer, I can just sort of go over the whole thing with a bit of oil, oil it out, and it just disappears. Which is great. Because you don't want harsh lines showing up through your paint. Looking a little bit fry from Futurama with this swoop to the side, but that's okay. I like Futurama. Another comfort zone TV show, for sure. I still think Futurama wins the award for best season ending style. If anyone's seen the final episode of Futurama, it is magnific. Especially if you watch the first episode straight after. <laughs> the other fun thing we can do with hair at this stage is once I'm done, is I can go through with a clean brush and just sweep some texture through the paint that's already there and it sort of pulls it off in little bits and just adds little brush strokes, which is quite a nice way to do hair. Makes the hair look more dimensional. Clean off my brush thoroughly. Just here along the hairline, I'm just going to drag it back up. I've got to be careful not to push too hard, otherwise, I'll pull up the skin colour because the skin colour is wet. <laughs> this is why, in my bigger pieces, I tend to paint the forehead skin and not the hair until the skin is dry. But it just adds that little bit of variation on the hairline. And blends it a little bit more naturally. Here I'm just pulling out a section of highlight and I can fill that in with this peachy colour in the next layer. And I think we're just about there, folks. Oh, whole block in in one night. Yeah. Achievement. <laughs> Thank you all so much for joining me. Um, I think I'm probably just going to stay up and just finish my block in on the other piece. I can show you that one as well if you like. As you can see I've sort of done skin but I haven't finished her eyes. So that's her at the moment. Very dark by comparison. I can't really sit these both on the easel at the same time can I? Woo! Thank you Sarah! I feel the hype! Let me take this off.
Job, you. Thank you for joining me, Nick. There we go. Let me zoom out a bit. So apologies, her face is still a bit weird because I used the wrong colour. But that sort of gives you the gist between the two. So they're two very different moods, but playing on similar ideas. And I like that the backgrounds sort of swoop together or away, depending on which way around I have them. So they're not like a strict pair, but they're two that I'm working on in conjunction with each other. So I've just got to go through and really finish her eyes properly and things like that. Because they are a bit whack. Oh, I need the mile stick for that. All right. Thank you all so much for joining me on stream. This has been super, super lovely. I'm really happy with how he's come out. So he's good to sit around for two days and dry. And then I'll finish her off and then she'll be right for the same setting. And then I'll be able to show you how they all go. Keep an eye on the Discord. I'll post a picture tomorrow of how my big piece turned out when I finish her off. But thank you all for joining me so much. And I hope you have a lovely evening. I love you all so much. Thank you. And I'll be streaming again next week on the Wednesday morning. Um, so we'll go from there. So have a lovely night. Bye.